So um, now we're going to run you through our rig we're using, and this is using beads, um, a four ounce weight, and clip swivel, and a normal swivel, and two hooks. Um, you want to cut nearly two meters of line. Place the fishing line through the eye of the swivel, and then you want to just do a six turn club knots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place that back through the hole you made. So you made a hole there. I see that. And you just place that back through there. Pull it tight. Then put a bit of spit in it. Then you want to take your nippers and you want to just nip that down as close as you can. And there we are. That's how to tie your swivel. Then on the other end of the line, you want to attach your clip swivel. This can be used to attach your weight, so it can just go on and off really quickly. So if you lose one, you can always change over. And there we are. So we do exactly the same one six times around and back through. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And back through. This bit again. And pull tight. There we are. I'm gonna just cut that off there again, even a couple of millimeters. It's always safe to do that, otherwise you can get snagged and if it doesn't break free your weight, the line could slip. Now we're gonna show you how to attach your weight to the clip swivel. So first you want to do is you want to push in this section here and it would just clip open. So you've got that section there. And take your weight put it through the eye of the weight, down, push it back over the little ridge there, and there we are, your weight. And then we want to come up 20 inches from the swivel, which is this one there, 20 inches, which is here, and we want to take another piece of line, which is about the same length, 20 inches, and place it over each other. This is known as the three turn water knot. So take this and just make a loop. Make a loop like that. And then take the end with the small tag and place it through with the swivel three times. This knot is often used with um fly fishing. But it also works really well on sea fishing. really nice knot and what you want to do is get your scissors and you want to just cut that off there so with a really small one and just cut it and there we are that's your first drop off complete you just want to repeat that two times down the line until you get to your clip swivel each one of them should be about, I'd say, 11 inches apart. So once we've done the drop off, we want to add the beads to it. You want to just take the beads and you want to just place them on individually. One, two, can be a bit fiddly. Then once they're on, you want to take your hook and you want to just place it over and you want to do the same six turn blood knot, which is one, two, three, four, five, six turns around the line. You want to place it back through the hole you just made. See there's a hole there? Back through that. Put it tight. Add a bit of spit. That'll make your hook 
really sturdy and you won't lose any fish on that there we are and all you have to do now is just pull that tight and just nip that there a bit more and there we are it's perfect and there's your beads and there's your hook so once you've got your drop down with your fishing hook and you've got your beads then you want to repeat that twice down the line to your clip swivel. Just to finish off, um, you have your swivel here, tied on the six turn blood knot, down here to the three turn water knot, which goes to your beads and your hook tied on with another six turn blood knot. And you come down again and we've just attached the next um, drop down with the beads and hook again. Same three turn water knot. You've got your beads in your hook there with your six turn blood knot on that one. And then you come down again, you've got your clip swivel here, tied on with the six turn blood knot, and that's just clipped on. So this is what your rig should finally look like. Each of the casters are doing some fishing and um, we're setting up our rods. We're also going to be doing a lug worm demonstration for you and some tips and tricks that you can use to fish from the beach. The equipment we're using is a Shakespeare into spin 10 foot rod and we're using a Okuma Electric um, ELC 180. So um, I'm just going to show you how to bait up your slugworm. Um, you notice know, these are really long. So you might want to just split them in half and you just put that straight through there. Put that around. Keep feeding it through. Come out the other end. You pull that right over the eye of the hook and down and up the, um, the line. is a basic three drop down rig with um, the beads and the lugworm on I think it's a 2-0 hook, 4 ounce weight as well. When casting, head down as close to the sea as possible. Hold your finger in place near the reel. Release the bail arm. Tilt the rod backwards, then flick the weight forwards with some power, but letting go of the line as you do this. Let the weight sink and set the bear line back on. Make sure your line is tight after doing this. After casting, leave your line out for about 15 minutes. This should give the fish a chance to come onto your hook. Jay here definitely knows he's got a fish on him. Um, really small. Just as you were saying, yeah. there's going to be nothing in the water. Look what we get. A nice dab. That was definitely the bottom bait there. Look at it. That was definitely a bite, though. So the bottom bait. Yeah. Once again, we were waiting, but patience pays off as Jay was once again into a fish. to eat this one. The first place we caught. This is a really nice looking place that Jay caught. 
It's a nice size and it's ready to be taken high. Make sure you fish at high tide as it's the best one. Low tide is not as effective. No, nothing. So once again, we headed down to Seaford Beach for a second day to try our luck, and instantly there was a bite. <laughs> this time, oh, it was a yes! huge bass came washing up Whoa! on Seaford Beach. Now look at that. After a few hours, the weather cleared and Noel was into a fit. I've just reeled mine in and I've got this little, uh, I think it's a flounder. It's pretty nice, it's pretty small. Um, hopefully I can get them back. Rebaiting is vital because it could mean the difference between getting a fish or not. This paid off for Jay as once again he was into a fish, this time a lesser spotted dogfish or a beaud. Oh look here! Ready? Off it goes. Yeah, look at that! Woo! I really hope you've enjoyed our video on beach fishing with bait. Let's so get out there and get your rod out and see if you can catch one too.